So to begin to see the application and the results that Ampere's law can get us, we start with this long straight wire of a certain radius. And then we look at the cross section and the current is uniformly distributed. These are all words that kind of reminds you of this when we did Gauss's law. Of course, in this case, we're not looking at a bubble in space, how much charge is enclosing. We're looking at a closed loop, which more or less looks like a rubber band, and we're enclosing current. So here we have a long straight wire that goes on forever, right? And we call that the radial direction. And it carries a current, let's say the current goes like that. You do an isometric view first just to see what's going on. And the, the wire goes on forever, right? And we basically want to plot out what is the magnetic field at each point. So we're talking about the magnetic field. If we apply the right hand rule, you don't know which one I'm talking about anyway. Anyways, if we use the one where we have the thumb following the current, we can see that the magnetic field should go in a circle, at least outside the wire, like that. And as it turns out, inside it does a similar thing. Now, to get the actual magnitude, we apply Ampere's law. So let's look at the cross section. There's your R. So similar to Gauss's law, there's different regimes, right? There's first of all a point that is here where let's call that little r. If your little r is within the wire, then we have a different kind of pattern than if we're outside the wire. Very, very similar to Gauss's law. In this case, we know that we will again exploit symmetry as much as possible to try and make sure this line integral is easy to take. And since we know that if we take a circle, because they're always parallel, the dot product works out, and the magnetic field magnitude is always the same, so it factors out the integral. Then we're left with integrate your path around a loop, in this case a circle, that tells you you're finding the circumference which is 2 pi r. And then the next thing is how much current is enclosed. Now the current generally goes outwards and that's where the word uniformly distributed comes into play. Because this isn't just the current, it's only the current enclosed. Very similar to Gauss's law, we only care about the part that's inside that loop. So the part that is actually enclosed since we're not grabbing the whole wire, we'll have to look at taking the total current, divide by the total area, and multiply by just the enclosed area. And this thing here, sometimes it refers to current density, which we can denote by J. Just like how, you know, lambda used to be the linear charge density, and then we have sigma for area charge density, etc, etc. We can also talk about current density. So here I enclose is I over, in this case, pi big R squared, that's a total, multiplied by pi R squared. Those guys go away and you have a different expression for your currents enclosed. R cancels, and we end up with that expression there, which tells us for zero to R to big R, which means inside the wire, the magnitude of the magnetic field increases linearly. Then the next case is of course we pick some R that is greater than my wire. We're outside the wire now. And again, we have that symmetry because current comes out and we do the loop. So current is positive. By the way, I skipped out for that part from the last part, but hopefully you didn't miss that. And again, we do a circular loop, which will have my the same magnetic field going along the path all the time. So the line into our once again becomes really easy to tick. We left with B the L and this B two pi R R being 
the size of your loop, which depends a little r, not big r. This other side is a lot simpler this time because the charge enclosed here, you're enclosing the entire wire, so you're taking the whole current. And this result you should recognize as the one we've derived in earlier in the chapter using the slice and dice method. But of course this requires us again to say that the wire is in fact infinitely long so that we are guaranteed that the field is perfectly circular and it's perfectly flat along the plane of the page. In any case, the relationship is 1 over r, so as it works out, your magnitude of b is a function of r, where big r is over here. It increases linearly to begin with, and then it starts to decrease slowly as a 1 over r kind of way, so then the maximum of course is at r is equal to r, and that's the answer. So really just demonstrating so really just demonstrating something that Ampere's law can do, whereas the slice and dice method couldn't do because the slice and dice method wouldn't have been very useful to talk about what happens inside the wire. We can then of course extend this to cylindrical wires surrounded by cylindrical shells, etc. etc. As long as we have that symmetry, the line integral becomes easy which again limits us to a few different symmetry that we'll get to see.